Good evening, and thank you for attending. My name is Deborah Exner, and I will be the moderator for this evening's candidate debate. Before we begin, please silence all phones and electronic devices. Additionally, please refrain from any interruptions uh, to the forum as it's being recorded for on-demand viewing and post-captioning services. Joining us this evening is Ms. Gina Roberts with the Clean Elections, Citizens Clean Elections Commission. The Citizens Clean Elections Commission is the sponsor for this evening's event. The Clean Elections Act is a campaign finance reform and public education measure initiated by Arizona citizens and passed by voters in 1998. The Clean Elections Act was created to allow campaigns to be more issue-oriented and less negative. The system provides full funding for qualified candidates who participate voluntarily. The candidates agree to abide by the Clean Elections Act and rules, which include campaign and contribution and spending limits, foregoing special interest groups, and special interest money, as well as participating in commission debates. The candidates invited to participate tonight are in contested primaries. Candidates in uncontested primaries are not included in the debate process. For tonight's forum, questions have been prepared by Clean Elections based on a voter survey, as well as questions that have been submitted by voters through the Clean Elections smartphone app. However, we encourage live audience questions first. If you have questions, please print them clearly on the note cards given to you as you entered and hold them up. Our volunteers will pick up the cards and deliver them to me. If you need additional cards, just raise your hand. We screen questions to clarify for clarity and to eliminate duplications, speeches, or personal attacks on candidates. The forum is scheduled for 30 minutes, so we may not get to all audience questions, but we will do our best. There is an independent timer who will see that the candidate has his allotted time to answer questions and will tell him when his time is up. Tonight's forum includes one minute opening statement, a lightning round, audience questions with two minutes to answer, and then we'll end with a one minute closing statement. We ask that you remain polite to the candidate and give him a fair and uninterrupted hearing, no matter how strongly you may agree or disagree with anything being said. Tonight's participant from District 30 is Mr. Tony Navarrete, Democrat, state rep for, uh, running for state representative. Mr. Navarrete, will you begin with opening remarks, please? Yes, so I um, definitely want to start off by saying thank you to moderating this event. Also, thank you to Gina for setting this up with the Clean Elections Commission and to our timekeeper. I will try to um, do my best and follow directions with the timer. Uh, my name is Tony Navarrete, and I am running for the State House of Representatives here in um, Arizona's District 30 as a Democrat. Um, I am someone that, you know, was um, was um, had the privilege of being raised in this community um, and went to school from elementary all the way to high school to eventually purchasing my home um, here in the West Valley. The reason I'm running um, is, is I'm running for uh, several reasons. One of them is to make sure that we are investing in our students and public education, making sure that we are providing accessible access to affordable health care, providing um, our students with a safe community, and making sure that we have jobs that pay well. And that means investing in our local um, businesses and our small businesses so that they continue to grow and hire more folks from the neighborhood. So that's why I'm here today and I thank all of you for being here in attendance. Thank you. To break the ice, we'll start with a quick, quick lightning round. Please answer with just one word. Pandora or Spotify? Oh, Pandora. <laughs> CNN, Fox News, or MSNBC? I, Reuters? <laughs> I guess if I had to pick one, uh, CNN. Okay. Lumberjack, Sun Devil, or Wildcat? Sun Devil. All right. At this time, we will begin with audience questions for two, with two minutes to respond. Thank you. So, Mr. Navarrete, do you believe that the United States should further restrict immigration? And if so, how? I think when we're talking about the topic of immigration, what's important is making sure that we're keeping families together. Um, as someone who is running to represent the state's, one of the state's most diverse legislative district, you know, it's important to recognize that we have mixed status households 
where we have undocumented parents with citizen children, and sometimes vice versa. Um, and I think it's important that as Americans, we protect the social fabric of our communities and make sure that our families who are in mixed status households have priority in making sure that they're part of the American dream and part of this country. So I am definitely, as someone who has championed um, comprehensive immigration reform in this country, I will continue to do my best to serve the families of Districts 30, serve the families of Arizona and all across the country. Thank you. What is your position on Common Core education standards which determine what K through 12 students should know in English and math at the completion of each grade? So I'm a, I'm a big supporter of beginning to draw the baseline of where education needs to go. And Common Core, at its core, um, it was actually brought together by you know, educators, educators that are professionals, that are in the classrooms, and are very aware of what needs to happen. Um, we've seen lots of policies across the country, whether it's handed down from the federal government or whether it's handed down from state government, um, is that voices of our professionals, our, of our educators, are not often heard, and it is important that we give them the space as Common Core does. Now, does Common Core answer all of our, all of our answers? Does Common Core provide our students with the best education? You know, I'm not going to go as far as saying this is, a, this is the... Um, this is the main solution, but I think that it's a step in the right direction and Common Core is something that I do support. And at the end of the day, as someone who works with tons of educators, board members and students, it is important that we begin to put politics aside and support, uh, support policy that is driven by educators. Thank you. What are your thoughts about requiring employers to pay both men and women the same wage for doing the same job? I think, I think the question, um, I guess it sounds funny when someone says it that way, but I am a strong believer as a feminist that we need to make sure that if, let's just say, if a moderator is a man or a woman, that moderator is a professional and has to abide by the same requirements and objectives of the role and must be paid the exact same amount. Thank you. Mr. Navarat, what is your opinion about the amount of money the state of Arizona spends in addressing the needs of the state and its citizens? I believe that for many years, and I would say over the last 20 years, you know, I have grown up here in this state. I, I was born and raised in Arizona and have, you know, gone from homelessness have, and, you know, have weaved my way with my with my family through the shelter system through you know the the housing projects to eventually my mother raising enough money to purchase a piece of land where that became home and where my late grandfather was able to build us um, a two-bedroom house and when i think of the role that arizona has played in making sure that they are providing the resources to move families from point a to point b I think that um, we are desperately lacking the leadership at the state legislature that is many times, or that has been Republican-led. You know, I, recently there was an article in the Arizona Republic that Arizona is the number one harshest state when it comes to addressing the needs of our families. We now, you know, only provide families who are in transition, you know, with only one year of TANF, which is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. And I think that is a very ill value of the Arizona Republican-led legislature for our families. And we need to make sure that we are constantly putting our families first, because if we do not invest in our families and our children, we are moving in the wrong direction. And when we're spending 20000 I hope that's the right number, I believe it is, when we're spending $20,000 more per inmate than we are per student, that is the wrong message that the state government is sending to its, to its constituents. Thank you. What is your position toward the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, commonly referred to as Obamacare? Uh, as, someone who, as someone who has seen firsthand the effects that, I guess let me, let me take that back a little bit. When I think of the Affordable Care Act, I am in agreement with many Americans that it needs to continue to be modified so that it includes more families. 
um, I am a big supporter of the Affordable Care Act because without the Affordable Care Act, my mother, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, would not be able to receive the health care that she needed to beat cancer, to beat breast cancer. She would not get the um, resources needed to make sure that she was able to go through her chemotherapy. So, no, I'm a huge believer and you know, there is a ton of folks in our community that have pre-existing conditions that would the insurance companies just would not pay attention to, and they would deny them over and over again the insurance that they need to survive. So um, when I think of health care, and I do sit on the, the board of the Ryan White Planning Council, we need to make sure that we are providing care and affordable care to our most vulnerable to folks that are with, living with chronic conditions and making sure that everyone has access because when we are not taking care of our citizens, when we are not taking care of our communities, again, we are sending the wrong message and I, and I ask for your support in getting elected so that I can be a voice at the state capitol and fight for affordable health care, not only at the local level, but also at the national level. Thank you. Do you believe that the state government should continue to fund programs that serve families living in poverty? Um, again, I, I speak with many families in the district every single day, and if it's not me, I have a strong team around me that is constantly going door to door um, of District 30, asking families what are the needs that, what are their needs? and. The state does not provide the adequate resources in order to continue to protect our children. We have a, a huge number of children that are living in foster care. We have a huge number of disconnected youth that can't even get their first job. And that's why, as part of our campaign, we have launched, because I, I, I like to run movement building campaigns, campaigns that are based in the community, and we've launched a really aggressive internship program where we have gone out to the neighborhoods, to the high, local high schools, and recruited young leaders to be part of this campaign to learn the skills necessary so that they can begin to get involved. Because when you tell a student, you know, how do you feel that the state spends less money on you than any other state in the country? You know, what they're going to say is simply that's messed up and that's not okay. So the state has a lot to, to, move, to do in order to protect the state's most vulnerable. So I will be here as a champion at the state legislature, making sure that we're fighting for our families of all kinds. Thank you. Mr. Navaretti, what is your position on voters having to provide identification in order to vote in Arizona elections? I have led um, the state's largest voter registration campaigns over the last few years and have taken the county recorders to court, have met, you know, have, have met with the Secretary of State on various issues concerning voter rights issues. Um, in the last four, in the, just over the last four years, we've been able to register 40,000 new voters here in Arizona and primarily in Maricopa County. And the reason that is is because there you know, when, when you look at funding issues, when you look at where our, where our families are in terms of rankings, in terms of high school dropouts, in terms of college attainment, in terms of being able to get a good paying job, getting the skills necessary to attain those, you know, high skilled, um, high skilled jobs, Arizona is, uh, is severely lacking. And to go back to how do I feel about identification, we need to make voting as accessible, as easy as possible. And I am a big supporter of someone who is maybe, you know, going to the polls for the first time, they want to vote, maybe they never registered, they should be able to register that same day and, be, and make sure that their voice is heard in the decision-making process because they are, you have to be a U.S. citizen, you have to be 18 years by the general election day. So if they meet those requirements, they should be able to vote. And, you know, there's folks that do not have access to, you know, going out there and getting an ID, or maybe they lost it. I work with a ton of youth on our campaign that lose their ID all the time, and we're having to, you know, go online and request another one, or, you know, having them, you know, save some money so we can pay with a credit card over the, over the computer. And there's so many different aspects. So, you know, I think that we just need to make 
voting easier. There's not fraud out there. You know, there's very minimal cases across the country um, where there's fraud. So no, we need to make voting easier so families have a voice in the decision-making process. Thank you. Do you support Arizona's law to allow the use of marijuana for medical purposes? Um, absolutely, I, I do. I think marijuana, I think it's a conversation that we need to have as a community. It's a conversation that's very scary, but it's a conversation that's happening all across the country. So I think when we talk about marijuana, I think because it was passed by the voters of Arizona to provide medicinal um, usage, I think that you know, if the voters have asked for that, the voters need to be, the, the, the state needs to honor that decision that the voters have made um, to make sure that marijuana, uh, medicinal marijuana is legal. Thank you. Mr. Navarrete, do you support the right to bear arms as stated in the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution? Yes, I do. Thank you. In general, do you support efforts to increase the amount of renewable energy, solar, wind, hydro, et cetera, generated in Arizona? Arizona is, should be the model state, and Arizona should be the model state when it comes to providing renewable energies. We are, you can just talk to all of our volunteers. <laughs> you know, there is a sun that is beating down on our souls every single day at, you know, very high temperatures. And I do believe that we need to make, we need to find um, as many avenues of, re, of, of renewing our resources here in the state, especially when we talk about solar energy, when we're talking about wind power, you know, there's monsoons, you know, Lord knows that, we're going, that it's causing a ton of wind. But I am, like I said, when it comes to trying to find diverse methods of reusing energy, we need to make sure that Arizona is a leader, that we are utilizing our resources here in the state of Arizona, and our biggest resource is the sun, um, as a way of providing energy, not only here to our local residents, but across the country. Thank you. What is your position on requiring police officers to wear body cameras? I've had this question, I've had this, um, I've asked many of these questions to our local law enforcement. Over the, over the last few years, I have been working hand in hand with many of our local law enforcement on various t issues. Um, and one of the, one of the issues is, is um, providing cameras on, on our officers. So I've, you know, I've asked them many times, you know, what do you think about having cameras on your uniform? And their, you know, their response is like, well, well I'm a professional, so I'm going to be working professionally. Um, I do believe that the camera is there to not only protect our civilians, but it's also there to protect our law enforcement. So I am a big supporter um, of finding um, effective ways to use body cameras to protect both our officers and protect the civilians that they're protecting. Thank you. Mr. Navarrete, last question. If you were to be elected, what would be the first bill you would submit, and what would you consider your most important issue to address? I am a big, so I, I am running to represent Arizona's Legislative District 30, and Arizona's District 30 has a ton of really amazing strengths, but we're also plagued with you know, something we call poverty. So one of the issues that I really want to take on is how to begin to change and transform our criminal justice system. I believe, you know, we are spending an, an enormous amount of dollars incarcerating Arizona, Arizona families, and that is a problem. I, the United States also has the same value of incarcerating you know, a couple over over two million over two million um, citizens in this country. So I do want to make sure that as a state legislator, we are addressing the concerns of why we are spending so much money on criminal justice. You know, over even in Maricopa County, over fifty one percent, over fifty percent of the budget goes directly to addressing criminal justice, whether it's the courts, whether it's the jails. And I want to make sure that I'm partnering with some of our local stakeholders, those who want to see less recidivism, those who want to see uh, rehabilitative services, so that our families don't go back into the criminal justice system. We need to make sure that we are 
doing everything that we can in local government so that our families are providing, are, 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 are increasing the tax base, are, are getting good paying jobs, are getting purchasing homes or, or, or condos or renting apartments so that they have happy and healthy lives so that they are able to you know, provide their families with a good education. So that is one of my priorities uh, once I go into the state legislature and I hope that I can count on your support and, and getting me um, to the state legislature because I will be fighting for you and your families in our community. Well, thank you. And due to audience demand, we actually have time for three more questions. So despite my statement, the last <laughs> question, here's the no, next question. No, I was like, I want to hear some audience, audience questions. Those yeah. So do you believe the federal government should assign control of Arizona's federal public lands to the state? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I, you know, in Arizona's Republican le legislature, and I don't mean to sound so partisan, but our, our, um, our local elected um, officials are doing everything they can to dismantle or, you know, I, I, I want to see Arizona move in the right direction. And moving in the right direction does not mean the federal government selling federal lands to the state government. Because if that happens, you're going to see a huge selling off to industries that do not always have the constituents, the family's interest in mind. So I am against federal lands going to, um, to the state. Thank you. Mr. Navarrete, do you support an increase in the state's minimum wage? Um, I definitely support an increase to the state's minimum wage. That's one of our platforms that we are running our campaign on. I believe that families need and deserve a living wage and that our small businesses also deserve the resources, the resources needed so that they can continue to grow and can continue to in invest in hiring more folks from the local communities. I work with a ton of um, local small businesses here in District 30 because if, if you just go driving around, there is an entrepreneurial spirit um, in this district that I am extremely excited to see. And even despite the recession, our families were out there making sure that they were creating small businesses. And now some of these small businesses are flourishing, thriving, and, and, and hiring more folks from the neighborhood. So I am a big supporter of raising the, the minimum wage, but also a big supporter of providing resources to our local small businesses. Thank you. What are you doing to help students' education? What am I doing to help students' education? Um, education for me, that's our top priority, and I know that you know, we talk about education all the time, and sometimes you know, we, we practically beat it to death in terms of how much we talk about it, but are we truly finding creative ways that is solving the issue of making sure that our students have the best education possible? And I don't believe that we're there yet. And when, when a state spends the least amount of money on our local students, our local children, that is a problem. Um, you know, there is no reason why our students need to be the least funded in the country. For me, it is insulting. Um, although I am not a parent, I am an uncle, a tío, to 15 nephews and nieces. And I expect the state to provide the best public quality education for all of our students. And that is why I work heavily with young people across the state of Arizona. And over the last um, four years, I've been able to train up and um, train up over 2,000 community organizers so that they can take the issue into their own hands and begin to organize within their local high schools, within their local school boards, within their local you know, cities, and um, even counties. So I am very passionate in making sure that our students have the best quality education so that once they graduate, some of these employers that are seeking high-skilled workforce, that they will be ready for those jobs and they'll be ready for other jobs of the future. Thank you. What will you do to ensure that our families can restore relationships and feel safe around our law enforcement? I think that's a, a great question. So if whoever did that, made that question in the public, I think it's important that we begin to rebuild um, a relationship between law enforcement and between the community. And I've been privileged to work very closely with our neighborhood association, local block watches. 
our families, and even working with local law enforcement. So I have been um, fortunate enough to work with a wide spectrum of those who are interested in public safety. In Arizona's Legislative District 30, we have the most violent corner in the entire city of Phoenix, and that's on the corner of 27th Avenue and Indian School. And, you know, some folks would, would venture off to say, you know, we need to move all these bad people out of here. And I would venture to taking that a step further and saying, we need to find transformative solutions to really address the core issue. Because many times, some of these folks that many may see as criminals may be folks that are just going to pick up a red box movie, maybe folks going to a convenience store or catching a bus, or maybe someone's mother, father, sibling, child. And it is important that we work together to find solutions um, that are best going to address the issue of public safety in our neighborhoods. So I'm not sure if I fully answered it, but I definitely want to make sure that we are working as a community to address the issues of our neighborhoods. And I think that we're moving in the right direction, and I, you know, I applaud our local leaders and our local law enforcement in working together or increasing their work in terms of working together to really find these solutions to help our families. Thank you. What can you do to make sure that the schools have enough funding to help keep extracurricular activities and dedicated, highly qualified teachers? So as someone who uh, is very passionate about education, our chairwoman of the campaign is a White House champion of change when it comes to education. They are, are, they are a member of Arizona Education Association and also a member of the National Education Association. I want to make sure that teachers are treated as professionals. Many times, you know, we have folks at the state legislature wanting to dictate how to best teach our students, how to best teach a curriculum when they have never set foot inside a classroom over the last 20 years, but they believe um, that their way is the right way. I want to make sure that we are restoring the professionalism back into the classroom, back into the teachers, so that they are able to decide how to best teach our students because that's what they went to school for and they are, they are the ones in front of our students and in front of our families. Um, the other part of the question, what was the first part? <laughs> about, uh, is about keeping extracurricular activities and dedicated highly qualified teachers. So in terms of keeping extracurricular activities, I do believe that that is such a crucial piece to our students' success. Whether you're in um, a low-income community or not non-low-income community, I believe that our extracurricular activities in terms of sports, in terms of music, in terms of art really teach our students the responsibilities needed um, when dealing in public. They provide our students with the creativity to think outside the box. They provide a space for our young people to express how they truly feel inside. Um, so I am a strong advocate and will do everything that I can in working across the aisle and working with stakeholders to make sure that extracurricular activities um, such as art, music, sports, uh, creative writing, all have, a, that, a, that they are part of the priority or they are prioritized when we're talking about school funding because when, you, when all you're doing is teaching math and science, that's not very fun for students. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're also providing them with fun and something that is going to change their lives. Thank you. Mr. Navarrete, will you give your closing statement now? Yes, so um, for, the, for those of you who are here today, you know, I really would like for you to join me in this process to really um, be part of something greater than all of us. Um, you know, be, some, be part of something that's going to really transform the lives of our students, the lives of our families, that's going to transform and grow our small businesses. Um, I'm here for the long run, and I'm here for the long term to make sure that Arizona gets back on track and moves in the right direction because as an Arizona native, someone who was born here and raised here and has seen the change over the last 30 years, I am a huge advocate um, and believe that for a long time, Arizona was leading the way in, in this country. And I do believe that we have taken several steps back um, but 
I do believe that we can, we can continue going back to the right direction, and we have an incredible amount of people here who care about this state, an incredible amount of students who want to see um, a future here. So I want to work with all of you, and if you elect me this primary season and general election, you know, I will be at the state legislature working with all of you. Thank you. To our candidate, we thank you so much for participating in our forum today. And to our audience members, we thank you for all of you who took time to come out and be educated before voting. We encourage you to visit www.azcleanelections.gov where you can find information on the upcoming elections and download the Clean Elections app and learn about the candidates running for office. A link to the video of this forum will be posted at that site as long with other Clean Elections debates within 72 hours of the scheduled debate. Please fill out the debate evaluation form you received as you entered and return it to one of our volunteers. Your feedback is really important and will help the commission to improve future debates. Thank you all for coming tonight, and you are welcome to stay and speak directly to our candidate. And we also have material outside, so if anyone wants additional material on yard signs, please take yours. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs>